Welcome to Jump School. I'm your host, Asan Ali, aka The Style Jumper. On this podcast, you'll learn a ton of things. We'll talk about style, confidence, etiquette, creativity, and entrepreneurship. Today's episode was brought to you by my new book, Why Style Matters, The Mindset of Dressing Well and How It Impacts Your Life. To get your autographed copy, click the link in the description. Today's guest is a content creator guru, brand strategist, thought leader, partner, and deeper than the brand, co-host of the Nikki and Moose podcast, creative genius behind the number one motivational speaker in the world, E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher's social media explosion, the authentic creative mastermind, Nikki Sanders. Episode 14. The following is an excerpt from Instagram Live. Let's go. Nikki, what up, girl? I'm loving. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. How is our Norfolk? Because it's burning up out here. Listen, uh, it's hot. Uh, I stay inside. And so, you know, uh, I don't really, like, I go for my walk in the morning before it gets too, too, like, crazy. Yeah. Uh, but I walk the dog. And, yeah, I'll do it real quick and come right back. I ain't. I yeah, got AC for a reason. Uh, for a reason, I got AC for a reason. I promise you. Telling you, man, July came in swinging. It's like it's a So you know what? We're gonna represent. We're gonna represent. Ab- absolutely, absolutely. Happy Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July. Hey. So I want to start this off and, and have some fun because mm-hmm. this is. I did some research and there's some things that we got a ton of comments. So I was cracking up because I was doing research. Okay. So, um. First, you know, I want everyone um, to get an idea. I know I've been trying to share with everyone who you are. So mm-hmm. we'll just start off. You're from Queens. You're from uh, NYC. So Absolutely. Talk, you know, so let's talk about Queens. How, how was that, you know, growing up in Queens? Um, and, and let's go with that. Uh, Queens was dope. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the, uh, I didn't live in the hood. I live, <laughs> uh, I live in a very good part of Queens. Um, childhood was great. Um, the Catholic school all my life. Like, I just, I'm good. I'm Gucci. Like, okay. I wish I could go back. <laughs> yeah, well, what's Catholic school like? You know, I'm a public school boy. What's Catholic school like? Uh, boring. I don't know. <laughs> boring. I'm not really sure. Like, I can't really remember those days because I'm just like, sure. man, that's that. But it was like from first, from first all the way to high school, like Catholic school all day. Like, I I didn't even know anything else. Just checked, you just checked in and then checked out once you got yeah, up out yep, of there. Yep, praise God, hallelujah, amen, keep moving. <laughs> That's what's up. So, you're Leo. Absolutely. It's our, it's our birthday month. So Absolutely. When's your birthday? August 3rd. August 3rd, okay. August so, I'm 3rd. July 28th, so you're August Leo. Okay, that's what's yep. up. Yeah. That's what's up. Um, one of the things that I realized that is also cool about us is that we're both Navy vets. Yes. So you did uh, nine years. Absolutely. Which oh, you is- pay attention. Look at you. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, know, okay. I see you. I see what you're doing. You know, I'm trying to keep up, you know. But so nine years in the Navy. I spent five years. I'm a, um, I'm a West Coast Navy guy. So what about you? Where, where were you stationed? Here, Virginia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, when, the, the, the thing is, like, once you get uh, stationed in Virginia, you almost get stuck. And I happen to get stuck like got the house and everything like that. And so I was like, until something really hits me, like saying, boom, you need to move here. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna stay right here because while people are getting Corona over here while there's earthquakes and hurricanes and over here and everything, we don't have anything. We, <laughs> we don't have absolutely anything. Like nothing bad truly happens here. So I'm like, until something pops out, I'm not truly moving. So yeah, I've been I was stationed here uh majority of, of the whole Navy career and so I just stayed. Were you um were you on any ships? So you know, some people get lucky, you know, they, they three have ships. Their, woo, what's, three what's ships. What's ships? What what ships you were on? Uh we got James E. Williams, I commissioned that one, Donald Cook and co- uh commissioned the the New York, clearly. Mm. So, th- so those were yeah. uh th- that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what, what type of ships were those, were those frigates, cruisers? So, uh, DDGs and LPD. Okay, okay. Yeah. I did my first ship, I was, uh, the New Orleans, okay. LPH-11, and yep. then I was on the Constellation, the aircraft. 
All right. All right. Yeah, a lot of time yeah I love ship. I love ship life. Don't get it twisted. I love ship life. Like that whole going out to sea. Like you could keep me out there. I'm good. Like I, I went. I want to say I hit over twenty ports. So yeah, I love ship life. It was dope, man. It was the best. I have to say it was the best experience for me, you know, growing up down south, you know, just to be able to see the world, see, you know, of the cultures, of the languages. And, mm -hmm. you know, to your point, you're Puerto Rican, you know, that was that was pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, but, you know, growing up down south and, you know, like you find out that you think you're in your own world, but there's people that's like you from other parts of the country. Yeah. And you're like the whole culture is different, even though you guys, you know, you Puerto Rican, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. That, you know, so, so the Navy really, really introduced a lot of interesting things. But uh, I heard something else. You, uh, it's so funny because I was, uh, I was writing. I said that Nikki is like has that soft voice intensity. She's like a southpaw, and I wrote these in my notes. <laughs> I was like, Nikki is like a southpaw. She, I swear to God, I was like, Nikki is like she's jabbing with her right, and everybody else jabbing with their left. Right. So you got skills. I heard you. You got some boxing skills, girl. Let's talk about that. Um, so yeah, I used to box, uh, I was the, uh, first female, uh, gold medalist in the, the Navy little armed forces champion and everything like that. Um, I did it for about like, I don't know, like five, six years or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then I just stopped. I have this thing, like if I don't rock with it no more, it's like cold, yeah. like done. I'm done. Like. As much as I love, I mean, I'm Puerto Rican, so it's like, it's in my blood. Like, yeah. I don't know any other Puerto Rican that doesn't at least watch boxing. Okay. So, um, yeah, that, I'm kind of kind of nice with the hands, but, you know, I, I, I realize, yeah, I, I can't make too much money over there and I could die. I'm going to go over here <laughs> and go on the computer and everything like that. And, I mean, granted, seeing how female boxing has, grown so much mm -hmm. it's pretty dope but uh the fact that it still doesn't get the recognition that it does like it should uh yeah. would have gotten me frustrated early and yeah. so i was like yeah we gotta we gotta make a shift but did yeah you, it's fun did you have to put your hands on somebody on the boat man no no so this is the thing I, I don't i truly don't understand this right like so no one really messes with me like i'm five two Black and Puerto Rican from New York, all that great stuff. But like, no one really messes with me. I think I've gotten into like one fight in my whole life, like outside the ring. Yeah. Um, no one like when I was small, they said that I was the little bodyguard. Like I would oh, like everybody would chill with me because no one would mess with me. And then mm -hmm. it just happened that way. I don't know why. Like I promise you, no one messes with me. The the funniest thing, I'm like, yo, I'm mad short. What are you, what are we here you for? You got to watch them short ones, man. You know, they, they, they like them bulldogs. You know, you need a great day. And if you see the bulldog, like, okay, I'm going that way. Yeah, I get, I mean, I know I'm a very facial person. So it's very quick to know when something bothers me. So mm -hmm. I'm going to assume they see the face and they're like, yo, I'm good. I don't know. I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still trying to figure it out. It, it's funny though, Nikki, because you, you mentioned something about, um, you know, when you're into something, you cut it. After yep. I think that might be a Leo thing, because I swear, like, I'll do something, and when I'm done, yeah. I'm done. I mean, I'm, like, changing phone numbers. I'm out. You, you never, you know, never hear me talk about yeah. it. You don't see it. That's just that cutoff mode. I guess that's a Leo thing. Well, it's it, because I'm an extremist. I already know this about yeah, me. me. too. So, like, I go all in on something, or I'm not in it at all. Like, there's not really an in-between because I don't really have but anything. So, I mean, I can't, I, I'm here or I'm not. That's all yeah. it really is. I, it's interesting. So I wanted to just start talking about mindset. Mm -hmm. So when, when COVID broke out, yep. you, um, you went online and you were talking on your channel. And you were saying, hey, you know, people, I know you like to sell and that's important. Yeah. Right now, you need to really listen and engage with your, you know, your base. So yeah. what, what was that? Why was that so important, you know, to, to really, you know, focus in on engagement rather than I need to sell because everybody's at home? So I think it's, it's having a pulse on your audience. 
Like, it's really important to know, even though you're not physically there, to kind of get the, like, a temp check on how they're feeling. Because how they're feeling, especially if you're in a monetizing phase, like, if they ain't with it, like, they're not going to buy it just because they rock with you, right? So it is. it was very important to those beginning stages just to see how everybody was kind of getting accustomed to quarantine and how people like was fearing it. And, you know, with all the, the job changes and everything like that, your audience may have been affected. Your audience may not have, right? But you have to take those first couple of weeks in that, in that period to just understand them. You, some people were going in blindly. Some people were just like, you know what? Um, we're just going to keep it as normal, normal day because everybody's on the phone. And people were getting looked at and lost a lot of followers because of that. The same situation when we had, uh, when the whole Black Lives Matter uh, situation started. When you start, when you were uh, boosting whatever product you had, you seem insensitive. Mm -hmm. So it's about, it really showed what brands were really there for the for the audience and for the people rather for themselves yeah. and so that really showed uh who's real and who's not it's interesting interesting because i took notes from it when you said mm -hmm. that and that's mm -hmm. really gave me a part of the courage to start doing interviews because like right. let's 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 really engage you know what i mean let's mm -hmm. have conversations and it's cool, you know, style, you know, having fly clothes on, and that's that's all fun. But people want to to know you, but also know that you care. Yeah. So I got I got to ask you how many t-shirts you got, Nikki, because you you a t-shirt snap snapback queen. Oh man, uh, I don't even know. It's crazy because actually, I, you you're funny because I actually went to my closet like last week looking at it because somebody was like, "Yo, I want to give you a t-shirt." I'm like, man. At least if it has color, because I got mad black tees. Okay. Um, I got, I got a lot. I got a lot. I got a lot of, so especially with hats. So I want to say a few, a few years ago, somebody broke into my house. The oh, weirdest wow. thing, right? So they stole my hats. They stole, they stole some of my sneakers. Um, and this, I mean, this was a few few years ago. So they stole yeah. all my uh my PlayStation, right? This is when I was gaming, right? Yeah. So, uh, I was like, okay, you know what? If that's, I, I'm not even going to stress about it. I'm just going to get double the amount that they stole. Mm. Yeah, it hadn't stopped, and so <laughs> I I may have OD'd on the sneakers and the hats and. They didn't steal the shirts, but the shirt has to go with the hat and the sneakers. Of course. Yeah, it's it's um it's it's a different problem. It's a it's a good problem, but it's a different problem. It's a different Can problem. Can we call that a, a, an addiction? <laughs> so so I I would say it was an addiction mm. until I got them for free. And then it's not that an addiction. It's not mm. it's not an addiction. Okay. It's, it's free. So and, and I've been very good with my sneakers because before I used to buy them every weekend. Like oh, every really? weekend I would buy sneakers, right? Um, I think I've bought this year four, three pairs, three. Okay. I know I'm going to buy this Real weekend. Good. Yeah, okay. so we're good. So we good. No, Isaiah, Isaiah is saying still an addiction. It's not an addiction. I promise you. I've done so much better. I've <laughs> <laughs> what's, so what's, your better. Favorite fair? what's your favorite What's your favorite shoe? Ooh, okay, so it would have to be... I have to narrow it down to three. So Jordan's three, okay. Jordan's 13. Um, and I want to, I want to say the 11, but that's so cliche. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to have to go. Mm, I'll go with the ones. Cause I don't want to be cliche. Yeah. I don't want to be cliche. I got a lot of ones. I got a, I got a lot of 11s though. I got a lot. Yeah. Like I have, um, like, so, so what, what makes the, the Levin so special? Like, what, what is it about the Levin's that everybody loves? I, I think it's the simple, uh, the simple pattern. And then as well as in the most uh, biggest times for Jordan, he wore the 11s. Okay. So it's one of those things. Like, that's why I was, um, 
the other ones that like brand new ones that come out, no one really pays attention because like from like one to I'll say 14 or something is the one pretty much the most popular ones because we remember when Jordan was playing in them. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I, I would have, oh yeah, I got a lot of 11s. Cause I'm not going to not let an 11 come out and I'm not going to buy not gonna it. Grab it's not, it. That's not going to make sense. I'm so, I, my secret game is terrible. I've had one pair of Jordans my whole life. What? Those were the ones I got oh. when I was in So, okay, so they're school. ones. All right, they're, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's I had, had to get them with my dad. You know, Jordans, it was like $56. That was like a yes. million dollars back in the day. Oh, absolutely. You absolutely. Know, so I, I ruined them. I, I ruined them. Yeah, it. no, my mom, my mom used to buy me uh, Jordans, but not as often as I would like it. So I said, once I got some money, I would buy Jordans, right? And yeah, it just, it got out of hand a little bit. And so, you know, but I, like I said, I calmed it down. I have enough to pretty much wear a different pair uh, for the whole year and a half or two years, a different pair. Yeah. What? Yeah, so, because so I, my, my big thing was like, yo, I want to wear a different pair every day for a week. Okay. And then it became two weeks and then it became a month. And and then it just kept going, and so it's like them Fat Joe, Fat. I remember Fat Joe used to lick those forces. You remember yeah, that I don't. Thing? I don't lick. I don't lick the sneakers. I promise please, you. I please. don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't lick the sneakers. But I'm. I'm really big on. If you see me, you don't see me wear the same sneakers twice. Wow. Wow. Unless That's it's like, like a whole time. year, a whole year after or something like that. I don't really care about the shirt, pants, whatever. But the sneakers, you. I, and it's crazy because when I travel, praise God, we're not traveling as much as, but when I travel, mm -hmm. I would try to remember like, yo, what pair did I, who's going to be there and who's seen me before, right? Yeah. So I can pick the sneakers that they haven't seen, even though majority of the people haven't seen me wear that, wear that sneaker, I would still, because you're here, I got to wear a whole different pair of sneakers. Yeah, like... That's why I have so many sneakers. It, that, it that's is, the addiction. That, that's, that's called an addiction. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I've calmed down. Yeah, I've calmed down, okay? I'm good with that. Yeah, you, you, your foot hadn't grown, Nikki, so I don't think so. Five so and a half, five and a half in, in, in boys. I am good. I could always find my size. I'm good. That's what's up. That's what's up. So you ended up um, getting involved with, with someone who... You know, I've been watching since mm -hmm. 2009. Okay. Um, E.T.'s video, The Secret to Success, was at 1,500. This was yes. actually when the first economic downturn happened. Yes. So I'm sitting there like, oh, my God, what is The Secret to Success? And right. I'm on his video. So how did you come across E.T.? And then how did you get into the camp? Because, you know, the, the ET's kind of evolved, you know, and we have Breathe You. I was a part of that for a little bit, but kind of go into that whole scenario and, and, and mm -hmm. how did you get involved with that? So something you just mentioned, BU. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Isaiah's on here. Isaiah, what was the year of the boot camp? Remind me, because I joined the year before. So, um, so they had a Black Friday special, right? And mm -hmm. I had like binge watch E. Like, I, like this was um, a little bit after I got out of the Navy, binge watch, I was, uh, I was working IT at a bank and I was like miserable. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so like 2015, okay. So, because he said 16, so 2015 I joined BU, right? And then um, I just started adding value. Like, because I was just like, yo, this dude is fire. Let me just do as much as I can. So I was one of the most active people on the, the, in the group, anything he was involved with, I was there. The boot camp, the first boot camp that they had, it was like a two day one. And that just changed my whole life. Like, yo, game on. I need to be a part of this. So um, I like doing little videos back then, still do. But, um, and I would match his, his voice to like music and actual like video, right? Yeah. Where a lot of people weren't doing that. So um, I, would, I would put that in the group and then I would get with Carl 
who is like the, you know, third right hand, whatever. Um, and I would try to help him as much as I can. Like, yo, put me in the game, coach. Put me in the game, right? I was big on serving. I didn't have no desire to truly like be in the squad. I just had the desire to help out because they helped me fix my mindset, mm. right? So and it's the least I can do. What happened was, is that I happened to outwork people who was getting paid. Um, and so they were like, Nikki, um, do this. And I would do it just because of my Navy training and everything. I just do it really quick, right? Yeah, get it um, and they were like, yo, can you run the social media? And I was like, that can't be hard, right? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so when I grabbed it, it was about like 300K or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and then within, I would say, I don't know, like a year and a half, two years, we put it up to like a million. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, just serving. That was my biggest thing. So I went to every, my, my car right now got mad miles because I drove from here to Miami, to Atlanta, 17 million times, New York, all, all over the place. Um, if I could drive there, I could go, uh, just to be a part and, and help as much as I can because I wanted them to be like, yo, that's Nikki. I know, I know who Nikki is. CJ knew the sneaker game. He was yeah. like, he was like, yo, those are fire. He's like, why don't you get me a pair? Like it was the very first uh conference that I went. Hmm. He's like, yo, get me a pair. I was like, bet what's your size? He's like 14. A few weeks later, I send him, he was like, oh. Look, I'm keeping you close, and <laughs> like we we've been close ever since. That's a, that's an amazing story about hustle and commitment, right? So mm -hmm. you, you find a gap and you fill the gap with your talent and, and your yep. gift. And you know, ET's been you know providing so much content for years for free. Yep. And so, do you feel like as though that was more your mindset as well? Like, I'm going to do this for free because it gives me fulfillment. Yeah. Also, because he's this inspired me so much that I'm going to pour into this and give it my all. And then to your point, you asked Carl to put you in the game and Carl like gave you, gave you the, gave you the rock. Right. You know right. I mean? Right. So, so talk about that because I think a lot of people don't really rationalize the importance of service, you know? So, I, and they don't just because they think, from a I got to pay my bills standpoint so they put kind of a limit on how much they'll serve it's not that they won't they're like okay after three months what up like what are we doing you know four months what up what were we doing I instantly came with the mindset was I for me I was in IT like I have a six-figure job it's not that I need you mm. right is that I want to got it so I never moved off of desperation and trying to make a bag off of anything that I was doing for, for E or the squad. Yeah. That could have lasted for a very, very long time. It just happens that I have poured so much value into it. They started to feel bad. Like, yo, okay, we, we got to give you something. Um, Hello. This is yeah. something we have to do. Um, and it still baffles me. Like, yo, he's still hitting me up. Like people call, like, this is weird. It's still like weird to me till this day because I'm like, yo, I had no intentions of becoming this part of it. I just wanted to help. I wanted to be part of the movement as much as I can because I'm learning so much from just being in this circle. Mm -hmm. So the money is cute, but the value that I'm receiving from them is far beyond anything. Mm -hmm. And so if you're if if you're in an environment or a circle that you're still not getting poured into, is it's pointless. It's pointless. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get frustrated. You're going to get to a point where it's like, all right, this this doesn't make sense anymore. Like, mm -hmm. and that's because you're not getting anything out of it and it doesn't always mean money. You know, it's frustrating because a lot of times, you know, and it's, it's those those individuals in your ear and sometimes even mm -hmm. yourself, like, well, you putting in all that work and you're not getting no money out of it. Like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And so you, you start 
a lot of times people question themselves like, man, am I crazy for putting in this much effort? Or, you mm -hmm. know, you, you kind of have to push, you don't have to give those guys a stiff arm. Yeah. And focus on what you do and why you're doing it, as long as you know your purpose and what you're doing. And you said something great about the values. So what were we going to say? So that's funny because a lot of people say that about my brand as it is right now. Because of all the information that I give, and they're like, some people higher, supposedly higher than me. I don't necessarily think anybody's too higher than me. I think they're like further along with a following, but doesn't mean they're higher than me. So yeah. um, some people are like, yo, why don't you uh, charge these people this? And why don't you charge these people that? Like you don't do uh, 30 second, uh, 30 minute stuff, hour stuff. And I never put anything out there because I actually enjoy just giving out information. Like I actually enjoy helping other people grow their personal brands and things like that. And I'm more concerned with serving and building a tribe of people who just trust me rather than, yo, let me show you I could do this for a little bit and then let me get a bag real quick and you be on your way. If you like me, you like me, you don't, you don't. Like that's not my thing. Like I have a strong core people that will rock with me, whatever. And that's more important to me than a bag because I know the second that I drop something, boom, it sells out. So mm -hmm. like, and and I've had so many different conversations like, yo, you should do way more courses. You should do this, you should do that, you should do. I was like, I'm not exchanging my time for money. I'm legitly just helping people out. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, it's almost to me the way I see it and what I saw even with E, it's mm -hmm. like compound interest. Right? You just keep mm -hmm. putting it in, putting it in, and boom, before you know it, something's gonna kick off. Mm -hmm. And that that's when that check comes because something else you talked about, which I thought was amazing, is showing that body of work and why it's important. Mm -hmm. So you got a body of work. Let's talk about why it's important to show your body of work and really put that work out there so that people can validate what you do and also that you can show that you know i know what i'm doing so i mean let's be real like that's how we know people mm -hmm. like it is not what you do behind closed doors anymore of what we know about you like you are only localizing yourself to the public in your town or you know a few states or something like that right um the body of work can be searched the body of work can you know, be scrolled upon and everything like that. And people get to know who you are without you necessarily being in their face 24 mm seven, -hmm. right? It's, it's uh, auto automatic visibility, right? So it doesn't matter if you did a video uh, four years ago, the second somebody starts trying to figure out, yo, uh, how do I make money in this industry? How do I get healthy in this industry? Your body of work, if you've been putting in the time, is going to show up way more than other people because you've been very intentional with creating, okay, I got a video series here. I got a podcast here. I got a YouTube channel here. I got all these, I got blogs and everything like that. Like no one can take away your body of work when it comes to your industry, like I'm super in love with Kevin Hart and how he does things. The reason why is because no matter what my man does, scandals and all, no one can touch what he's done. Like between packed out shows, between countless of stand up comedy, movies. movies, production, all that stuff, say what you want, right? You can't not what he's accomplished. And that's the thing about a body of work. No one can knock you if you legitimately do it consistently, that body of work that you have. It's like, it's, it's, it's as equal as numbers. Like mm. numbers don't lie. And so your body of work doesn't lie either because you're sitting here like, yo, um, I've been in the game this, that, and long. Okay, but what have you shown? We're in a, we're in a day and age as sad as it says, if it's not on social media, if I can't look it up on Google, it never happened. It's yep. your word yep. against mine. Like it never happened. You've got to document everything, right? So that body of work, regardless of how you create content is crucial nowadays. 
So how do you, you know, how would someone, one, managing their brain with so much out there, how do I know how much time to spend if I'm, if I have my own brand, I'm developing my brand or I'm yeah. trying to create a following, how yeah. much time should I be spending creating content? And then we got the whole other side of it, which is the production side of it, right? You got yeah. to come up with content and then the editing side of things. So what does that look like and how much time should we be spending? So it depends on how fast you want to grow your brand. I think it, it depends on all of that. So like I, the first thing I always tell people is like, just make that commitment, right? A lot of people just say, yo, I want to build a brand, especially during this whole COVID season. Like, yo, okay, I'm here. Let me build a brand. Let me create this social media. Let me do some videos done, right? All I'm asking is what is your commitment level? Like, is your commitment level two times a week, three times a week, four times a week, like be honest with yourself. Some people, when they haven't started at all, like they just started creating a profile and a bio and everything like that, they'll say, yo, I'm posting every single day. And then they don't. And yeah. so I, you have to think realistically, look at your life. Like understand that though we think everything revolves around social media, mm -hmm. right? we do have a regular life. So put that into account, put that, that you have kids account, put on that you have a job, put that you have a spouse or significant other, put that and then you need free time mentally as well. Right? Yep. Like put that all in perspective and be like, okay, when can I at least grab my phone and press record? When can I at least grab my phone and take a picture? When can I at least open my audio notes and, and say something to it? You know, at least get it to, to the point where I'm saying something and it actually writes it out and I may just have to fix a few words into it. Like there, you have to at least dedicate at least 20 minutes a week. Let's start there. Start 20 minutes a week where you could create one piece of content and figure out what day you're going to post that. Mm. And then if you're saying that's easy, you're okay. Up, I, I dare you to up it. But do you find that, that uh, people get stuck with the overproduction and then you just have, like you said, flip the phone over, you know, and you just start talking to the phone. If you're giving jewels, if you're giving knowledge, mm -hmm. that is the value. And then you can kind of dress it up with some of the other apps and things of that nature. But mm -hmm. some of us get really stuck in, being high production and trying to compete and, and, and compete with some of those brands out there do have like a film crew, you know, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that? I think people don't really look uh, how long those people have been on social media and how long they've been creating. I mm. think they, they jump on and they're like, I have to match that when they've been on three years, four years, five years. Right. Yep. And some may have deleted their early stages of pictures and videos and everything like that, because it's kind of trendy to do that. But at the end of the day, they're like, for instance, with Instagram, you could go to somebody's profile, press about, and you're going to see how long they've been on Instagram. Mm. Right. And so that has to be accounted for. Right. Um, anybody who's there longer than a week than you probably has an advantage, you know, there's levels to this whole style, branding, uh, posting, everything. There's levels to it. It really just starts with your phone. It yeah. really starts with AirPods or whatever kind of headphones. It really starts with natural lighting. You know, it starts there. And, and until you've mastered that, have you at least changed the settings in, in, uh, on your phone to have 4K uh, video? Have you... Uh, try to do a voice note right before you go and try to have a whole podcast studio. Like there's certain things you should learn how to master before going and buying all the different equipment, going in and buying 17 different apps with all the subscriptions and everything. Have you even done the free trial? Exactly. Like there's, like, there's so many, right. There's so many apps that everybody highly recommends but you don't even know how to use it. So do the free trial first, see if it even fits you, see if it even fits the, the knowledge that you have for yeah. creating content. If it is too above you, 
Okay, look for something that's that's a, a little bit simpler. There's no shame in that. Too many people have egos mm-hmm. and that is too much. Because it's cool to have an ego, but some people have a little bit too much of it. And they're saying, yo, I got to beat everybody. I got to look different because I'm, I was created different. Yes, you were created different, but there's levels to everything. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. whatever age you are, it took that long for you to have the maturity and the knowledge that you have. Just because you jumped on social media during this season doesn't necessarily mean you have all the knowledge because you you stepped in the arena. That's crazy. Well, if I let, let's say like we think about it, um, I'm just starting. I got this I grand idea, you mm-hmm. know, got laid off on furlough, you mm-hmm. know, stressed out. And I'm like, man, you know what? I'm uh, I've been thinking about this idea for a long time. What are some things that you would suggest? Like if I'm just straight green, right. what would be a solid strategy to, to get the momentum, if you will? Um, I would say write out how social media, like as a consumer, as somebody just watching, how, what would make you follow that idea? What would make you buy that idea? What would make you want to learn more about it? Let's reverse engineer it. You know, mm-hmm. it has to start with you at, at first, right? Because if you can't even attract you, you're not going to attract anybody else. Nice. So, right. like... It, you have to want to press like on your own photos, on your own videos, on your own uh, products and services. You're going to have to like it and want it your own self, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of people struggle with that because they try to talk to people they don't even know, try to solve problems they don't even know the solution for, mm-hmm. right? Um, create content that is the complete opposite of them, right? So... It is all about first and foremost reverse engineering it to the point where, yo, what would make me interested in this? What would make me want to buy it? Like, what does it have to have? Like, let me try to get out of me being the brand per se, right? And let me be the fan. Mm. And if you could think of your brand as the fan, you're always going to move differently. Gosh, that, that's deep, Nikki, because, you know, everybody, I think a lot of us, are, we get in our heads, right? And we just, mm-hmm. you know, stuck, you know, whether it be, you know, I'm, uh, like you say, everybody got an ego. So we lean mm-hmm. in deep on that ego. And then, you know, you're listening to others who who kind of flame that ego as well, right? Mm-hmm. So how do you yeah. sometimes stomp that out and focus on all those tangible things that you spoke about? So... During COVID, these past couple of months, there's yep. so many people who, you know, maybe they did connect with their with their clients or their their followers, their base, mm-hmm. and then they went hard on the sales side and they've been killing it, right? There's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of brands that have been killing it. Do yeah. you feel like it's too late for someone who feel like, man, I missed the boat, I missed this opportunity where everybody was home and they were in front of the, t- you know, in front of their phone and the only thing they had was the phone and the TV and nothing was on but uh, the last dance, you know, and Netflix. No, no. So, um, supposedly there's a second wave of COVID. So, yeah. and there's a lot of people uh, that is scared to go out. There's mm. a lot of people who are not moving as much as they were doing before the world as we know it is not going to be the same for quite a while i don't even know if this year we can honestly say that things are going to be the same we already know events and big uh gatherings aren't coming back till next year so little things are coming back but what we know is is different meaning a lot of us are still at home a lot of us are still on on our phones. A lot of us still have a certain kind of Netflix playlist we got going on and things like yeah. that. Um, so it's not too late to start. It's funny because those people who went really hard in the beginning of COVID have fallen off. Mm. So now there's a gap for people to come back. Like, yo, where where are the people who said they're going to be on and supporting us and everything like that and give us entertainment, motivation, education? Like, 
where are all these people that was so hard? Like, I think everybody remembers when everybody was live 24-7. Yeah. Like, there was a period where you couldn't jump on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, and, like, nine people were live. Yeah. Like, crazy. And now hardly anybody is. Yeah, right? you're right. So, so this is the perfect time to jump back because there's certain states that the numbers are rising again. And yeah. so people are still on their phones. People still are like, yo, I need, I need something to get my mind off of it. I need something like more than ever, more than ever, people are still on their phones. So I say, if you did not start on the first wave, I need you to jump in now. Let's go. Let's get in. So with that being said, Nikki, mm -hmm. give me a couple of hacks. What's some cheat codes? What, what's some apps out there? What's some things that I could do to, to get, get myself on point to, to be hot and dope? Mm -hmm. Maybe as you. Not really, but you know, <laughs> we, we, we try. You know, people trying listen, out here. Listen, I, it's, it's very capable. I'm not, that, I'm not that deep. I promise you. I'm not that deep. Um, so I would always say start with free right? Start with free and build that momentum up. So like free apps I always recommend is Canva. Canva is one of those uh, graphic design apps that you can do right on your phone. You can create flyers, posters, stories, eBooks, everything in the world you can create on Canva for free, right? You just have to have an imagination. They have 17 million different templates, right? create there. If you do not have like the design mind, which most of us don't trust me, um, use a template that's there, customize it however you want to. Canva is really dope. Uh, Adobe Spark is another one that pretty much does the same thing, but has some animation with it. So it's pretty cool. Um, from the video side of things, I'm going always going to say InShot. InShot's a very simple editing app that allows you to size it into any uh, format, whether it is Instagram, whether it is Facebook, Instagram stories, Twitter, it doesn't matter what social media platform they have a, they have formats for everything. They have cool little effects, all that great stuff. You can, that's where you can simply put like a white or black background on your videos, put a quick title, keep it moving. Like very, very basic, simple. Um, another one that I use is uh, Adobe Rush. Adobe Rush is pretty dope. Um, it allows you to then manipulate the color into it, manipulate the audio into it, give some basic transitions. And then on the photo side, I'm always going to say uh, Visco. Visco has 17 million different filters to oh, yeah. give you that look as if you had a photographer shoot it and you honestly just did it on your phone. And Lightroom is pretty dope as well to give that kind of high definition look, regardless of if you shot it on your camera, shot it on your phone, shot it with a GoPro, doesn't matter. Like those couple of apps right there can get you going a lot further than even people who have paid apps. Got it. Well, I appreciate that because I know there's some people out here who's going to hear it and they're mm -hmm. going to take notes. I was taking mental notes. But thank God your boy got this recording. Hey. <laughs> you know, you right. know, but um, let me ask you this. What's up? I know you love hip hop. When I did do. you when did you fall in love with hip hop? What was that one song and you knew you were in love with hip hop? Do you remember? Um, so this is so this is the thing. So my mom, when I was in the womb, only played like VH1 and MTV. When I came out of the womb, Put me in front of the, the TV, watch VH1 and MTV all day, every day, right? Um, I think I took it very, like, serious when uh, Biggie died. Like, mm -hmm. when Biggie died, I had the cassette in Puerto Rico, and I was playing the double cassette all the time. Um, and ever since then, I really took it, like, super, super serious as far as following the culture and everything like that. Like I've always been because my mom plays it. Like I said, I watch all the music videos. Yeah. Um, but it was it wasn't until like Biggie died where I was like, oh okay, I'm 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 in the whole culture. I'm I'm here for it's, it. It's real. It's real. Right, right. Like Tupac died, and I was like, uh, I'm Biggie all day. Like 
I'm, I'm Biggie all day. I don't know. Sorry. No, you to anybody. Good. Look, Nikki, you yeah. jumping the gun because there okay. this is a, I was leading you up because okay. I do this thing called the, lad, the Creative Last Supper, and I think you'll appreciate this. Okay. So it's going to be an either or, and, and I did, a lot of this is hip hop because I know you into hip hop. Go ahead. All right. So Nas or Jay? Uh, Jay. Big ear pot. You already answered that. Biggie. Biggie. Rock him or Big Daddy Kane? Neither. What? Before my time. Before your time. Got it. Before my time. Not even going to play. <laughs> you ain't going to play with it. That's me. Right. See, so you, you date Miss Gray. All yeah, right. I, listen. <laughs> J. Cole or Kendrick Lamar? Mm, why you make me pick that? Oh, um, mm, mm, I'm going to say, mm, man, that's hard. I'm going to say J. Cole. All right. Tyler the, creative, <laughs> Tyler the Creative or Childish Gambino? Childish Gambino. Puffy or Dre? <laughs> As a producer, Puffy or Dre? Dre. Wu Tang yeah. or Wu Tang or Mob Deep? Wu. Like Nipsey. you can't. That's 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 not that's not I'm, even a question. That's not a question. I'm trying. You know, I'm. I'm doing, like that's I'm just trying. because you pick. That's just, that's just because you pick Queens. That's but that's not like there's no real group that goes against Wu. Like that's not that's not fair. It's facts. It's facts. Facts. Mm -hmm. Nipsey or Ice Cube? Nipsey. Foxy Brown or Lil' Kim? Lil' Kim. So now I'm going to some music. Go. Oh. Mary J or Sade? I'm going to say Mary J. Sade is like, that's a, I have to be like, really, <laughs> like you already know, like you, you can't describe it. You, you just got to be good. Like, nah, I'm cool. Mary J, she, she goes through ups and downs all day. I'm with it and dancing. Yeah, I can't. I can't. That's what's <laughs> up. Mike or Prince? Mike. Martin or Will Smith? The, the Martin Martin Show or Will Fresh Prince? I'm going to say Will. I'm mm. going to say Will. All right, so we're going to get in the film. Go. John Singleton mm -hmm. or Spike Lee? Spike. Spike got, got classics. Got I it. Got so one more thing, because I know we're cutting close on time, and I want to see if anyone has any questions. But I was thinking... I learned through research and someone I really learned a lot about and you, it was obvious when you said it was Nipsey. So Nipsey, yeah. Nipsey and his whole marathon strategy, mm -hmm. you know, in vertical integration. Mm -hmm. What was about that is so important and how we all can take a little bit of Nipsey with us. So the, the thing that hit me with Nip once I like really like bogged down and really started studying was the the ownership part like my man did not move just for like like he loved the community and everything like that but mm -hmm. it was about owning so he can help further right he didn't want to leave it to other people as far as like even his block with yeah. uh crenshaw and slauson like he could have rented like everybody else but he's like no we're gonna own this and we're going to give back to the community with his music, um, not leaving it in the control of other people. He controlled his masters. He, you know, he did the hundred dollar mixtapes that he was an innovator. Right. But at the same time, he showed us the importance of, you know, would you put your head down to it? Anything is possible because the end goal is always going to be some ownership. Mm -hmm. So that that for me was one of the biggest things when when it comes to Nipsey. Like I got 17 other lessons, but that always the ownership part always hits different. Yeah, and and uh, I agree with you 100 percent in it. And he had that marathon long vision. It was always about the long this, game. Yep. All about the long game. Mm -hmm. So my last question, and before I get to the last question, first I want to thank you so much for Go spending ahead. time with me. It was dope. You know, even amazing. Where can everyone connect with you? I want to hit you on the DM because that's what I did. Right, Take right. Notes, folks. <laughs> right, right, where, right. Where, where can they reach you? Where can where can we reach you? So easy. If you just click up there where he's at up top. Uh, this is Nikki's right. Um, I I love being on Instagram. I'm starting to do the Facebook thing because I got the Facebook Live. I'll go into that a little bit. 
Um, I got a text gang, text community. Text gang. Uh, 718-400-7061. I'm giving like daily tips. I'm telling everybody when I'm going live because notifications are crazy. Um, anything that I'm involved with or anything that's pretty much needed to help you grow, like I'm putting it in the text gang. Um, me and uh, Moose, which I know you had Moose on uh, before, yeah. Right. Uh, me and Moose have a, a Facebook live show called Nikki and Moose. And we pretty much break down the greats and their different characteristics um, with the whole flight assessment and everything like that. But we break down like what are their highs and lows? Because mm -hmm. if your characteristics are similar to theirs, you can learn from them. And that's how you connect. Like there's certain introverts that you could connect with in a such what it deems as a extroverted world. So you can yeah. see how some introverts have been successful in the digital game. You can see how uh, some, some of the extroverts have branded themselves a little bit differently. And so that's really big. It's a lot of people, uh, there was one person who was like, oh, so you just love talking about celebrities. I was like, no, 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 no. We're breaking down certain things differently. Mm -hmm. um, so we have that uh tuesdays and thursdays on facebook live at this is nikki's uh 8 p.m and then we have the youtube channel which breaks it down like smaller bite size um and we're building that up uh same yeah. thing nikki and moose and that has been growing and it's only been like a week so yeah yeah, yeah. i have seen you i'm taking this not pay attention nikki i'm taking notes. body of work i told you body of work yes yes ma'am so last one too also that you did mention be smooth. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, so this is the thing. Like I, I don't always like talking about it just because like I never want to seem like salesy. That's just it's it. not me, right? Got um, it. but yeah, I'm a CEO of Be Smooth Digital, and that's pretty much like the one-stop shop of anything you would need for being a personal brand. So like we have uh, content creation, we have a uh, graphic design website uh coaching uh course creation all these different things uh depending on the level that you are with your brand so um we're really building out the kind of like the do-it-yourself vibes mm -hmm. and then building you up to where you may need the service or not it's so um i'm big on the coaching side clearly that's my whole thing um mm -hmm. nick does the graphic designs and website isaiah does the content creation uh, Jose does the course build out and everything. So uh, we got a we got a great Dream squad. Team. I love my team. Dream you know, team. So, yeah, real. we we are. That's what's up. So final question. What's up? I don't want, to, I don't want us to get cut off. Here we go. So. If you had twenty four hours, yep, to spend with any creative, and y'all mm. go deep, mm. not stop all the questions, everything, who would it be and why? Um, this is going to sound really crazy, but oh, this is going to sound crazy and people may be like, wait, what? I may not even take that 24 hours because the person that I want to talk to is already passed and that's Nipsey. Yeah. And Nipsey. so, yeah, right. so, so I would, I would chill for those 24 hours because I would be over there talking it all up because that's the only like person at this moment that even till this day, that I, I watch at least one or two videos every single day mm. of Nick um, just to learn because it, it doesn't make sense the impact that he's left. And when he was alive, like not so many people supposedly knew of him, but mm -hmm. after his death, it created such an impact. So I'm trying to be like, how, What's, what, what was it? So. Um, yeah, for me, it would, it would have to be Nick because he's the one that still to this day, people are impacted by his death. And I want to um, know, Nip yeah, that's, that's the only thing. Nip Nips is dope. And, and I was one of those people. I didn't know a lot about his music. It was kind of like a different era for me. Mm -hmm. But when he passed and did the research, I mean, I was, it, it just blew me away how, how his mind worked, the books he read, his transition, yeah. his growth. So phenomenal answer 
Miss Nikki Sanders, it's been a pleasure, an honor. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you again. And Thank we're going to connect after this. But God bless everyone. Thank you for showing up for the Style Jumper. And Miss Nikki, because she's a mur she's a murder. And, and gosh, you guys got to go back and check her out. She was talking about Ja Rule to just crack me up. Oh, ja look, because <laughs> he was, he's clowning. But I think he's clowning for a purpose. But he's clowning. Hope so. Tell him to take notes from Mike. You know, if you take notes from Mike, Mike, Mike did some, some good work. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, Nikki, you take care. God bless. Bye. Bye. Peace. I hope you enjoyed today's amazing interview. Today's episode was brought to you by my new book, Why Style Matters, The Mindset of Dressing Well and How It Impacts Your Life. To get your autographed copy, click the link in the description.